this afternoon while I was uh, coming into his tent and load my instruments and some people they see me hey, people keep an eye on me over here they're watching me oh yes they uh. they's watching me a couple of them they see me roll my instruments in and uh, they was out here kind of in a traffic jam out here in front of the tent they screaming out the tongue of the open their mouth up saying hail Satan hail Satan you trying to try from their car and I got to thinking to myself you just wait for church time they don't even have a PA, but I got a PA. Amen. And while they're talking about Satan, here just a little bit, I just said, I didn't turn around and yell at them. I said, here just a little bit, I'm going to be saying Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Not Satan. Yeah. I'm going to be saying Jesus. Yeah. And so I'm glad, amen, that there's a battle going on. And it's just good to know I'm getting under their nerves and bothering them a little bit. Amen. With my Jesus banners, amen, on the side of the tent. Hallelujah. And I'm glad to be a let my light shine. Amen. From the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Ten Commandment number one. The Bible teaches us reading from the Ten Commandments. I've read them so many times. By the way, I do the Ten Commandments not one night. So uh, if you're first time here, uh, I'm not doing the Ten Commandments just for you. Amen. But I'm doing it every night, seven days a week, 7 p.m. nightly. But Ten Commandment number one, the Bible says, The Lord God spake all of these things, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. What is the house of bondage? Could you not agree with me that addictions is bondage? Yes. yes. I mean, could you not agree with that statement? I mean, because once you get addicted, uh, I think they said it best in a rock and roll song, said, Welcome to the Hotel California. You can check out anytime you like, the song keeps saying, but you can't never leave. You know what that means? You're locked in that hotel. You're stuck in that hotel. You can't never leave the Hotel California. That's what you call the house of bondage. Well, I want you to know there's a lot of people who are in bondage to methamphetamine tonight. There's a lot of people here in Fort Mojave and the surrounding areas, Bullhead City, Laughlin, down the needles, this whole run down through here. There's a lot of people, they call them, I think they call them tweakers. People that uh, mix meth and phetamine, cheap dope, mix it up and get doped up and drugged up, trying to have hallucinations that they know not of. But I want you to know something, they need deliverance. They need deliverance, they need to be set free. And they literally have turned their drugs into their God. They'll do anything. I tell you, Beth can get on people so bad, they'll even lie from their own, lie to their own mother. In some cases, even kill their own parents for another shot of meth. I mean, dope can make people do that, even their own children. I mean, it's horrible. Some of the things that little children have had to put up with because their mother was all strung out on methamphetamine. Had a girl come by the tent here just since I've been here, and she was uh, saying, pray for me. She says, I lost my kids and back over in California. Why? Because of drugs. When you get to doing too many drugs, uh, you know, uh, let me tell you something. It's a terrible thing when they take your kids and, and, and you need to hang on to your kids because they once they get a, into foster care once they get into the adoption system and into foster care they're liable to not be with uh, Adam and Eve they're liable to not adopt them to an Adam and Eve but they're liable to adopt them out to an Adam and Steve and that would be a terrible thing or or uh, Sally and Susie you know we, and so uh, if you want if you love your children how many knows you need to amen make a marriage and make it right amen in the eyes of God all of these things, amen, are breaking the laws of God. And Ten Commandment number one says, God said, I am the Lord thy God that have brought thee out of the land of Egypt 
and out of the house of bondage, Ten Commandment number one, don't have no other gods before me. Do you know some people have looked at their self in the mirror so much that they actually begin to worship their own self? I mean, they literally admire their self, look at themselves, and they think their selves are great. But God said, don't have no other gods. Don't put nothing before God, not even your, not even yourself. How I many knows God's got to be number one in your life? Ten Commandment number two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Graven images of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them or serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, and I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me, showing mercies unto thousands of them that love me. Way back in the ancients of times, the Egyptians used to print marks upon their bodies and they believed it was to help take them into the afterlife. They actually made marks and placed marks upon their body. They did that to their to the mummies and in the Egyptian times. And uh, they was all always putting images on their buildings, marking their temples up and marking their altars up, marking everything up. And uh, uh, but when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt bondage, God said in Leviticus 19:28, He said, "Do not print." any marks upon your body. I want to tell you, if you're mark friendly, if you're tattoo friendly, if you're used to putting marks upon your body, you might be a good candidate uh, for when they get ready, Revelation 13, that no man will be able to buy or sell lest they have a mark either in their right hand or their forehead. And right now, why wouldn't they want to put a mark in their hand or their forehead? They've got a ton of other marks, amen. Why not just add one more to it? And so we're living in times, amen, where Bible prophecy is being fulfilled, amen, right before our very eyes. And the scripture says, any graven images, any marks. And somebody said, well, I like them. I'm not a bit surprised. A lot of people love to get themselves all inked up. Why? Because they say it makes me look cool. It makes me feel like I fit in. This is what they say. It says, it's my body. I can do with my body what I want to do because it's my body and I can do what I want to do. It's about to glorify my body. You just made my point. Everything that they make excuses why they want ink is exactly, you're breaking Ten Commandment number one. Don't have no other gods before for it. You're putting your body actually above God when you stop to think about it. Jesus said, amen. Jesus said in his in, in the word, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. But he said, my words shall not pass away. And so I believe with all of my heart, amen, we need to live before God. And besides all of that, Besides all of that, there's nothing any worse than to put a name of some guy on your arm and then you break up with that guy and then you're married to another guy, find another guy, then you've got tattoo regret. How many would at least concede that? Amen. Because you got to be careful what you put on your on your body. Amen. I'm so glad that even in my crazy years of 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, that I'm so glad that I did not get myself influenced to the point that I would go that far. I'm so glad. But what do you do? My grandfather, he was a great trainer tremendous preacher my grandpa was and he preached against tattoos and he had tattoos on his body but he preached against them how did he get them it was before salvation aren't you glad that there's mercy and grace amen that after you get saved my grandpa i'm talking about my grandpa he he had them from his navy days but when jesus forgives you you can't help what you've already uh, what you've already done done but aren't you glad for mercy and grace that if you don't do it no more you draw a line god will forgive you yes he will amen and julius dad the same way and so I believe that with all of our Ten Commandment number three, the Bible says, Ten Commandment number three, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain, cussing and swearing. Some people cannot talk without using curse words and swear words, mm -hmm. filthy, vulgar, the mm -hmm. F word, and all kinds of filthy profanities. Jesus mm -hmm. said in Matthew chapter 5, You had heard it been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. But Jesus said, I'm going to tell you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by the earth, because it is his footstool, neither shall you swear by one of your hairs which are upon your head, because you cannot make one of them white or black. But Jesus said, Let your communication be yea and yea and nay and nay. He said, Whatsoever cometh more than these cometh from evil. Ten Commandment number four. Amen. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen. Six days shalt thou labor and do all of thy work, but the seventh it is the Sabbath day of the Lord. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son or daughter or manservant or maidservant, nor thy cattle or stranger in thy gates. 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. And he rested on the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. Ten Commandment number five. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land of which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Ten Commandment number six. Thou shall not kill. Only four words in that verse. Thou shall not kill kill. I believe that even includes yourself. Amen. I believe this with all of my heart. People go around killing but don't want to be killed. Ten Commandment number seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Sexual immorality. This is in the Old Testament. But if you jump over in the New Testament, Galatians chapter five, the Apostle Paul even adds to that a little bit. And he says adultery and fornication. As I've told you before, as I've told you in times past, Paul said in Galatians 5 in the New Testament, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Ten commandment number eight. Thou shall not steal. Stealing is a sin. It is a sin that will keep you out of heaven. How many times do you get to sin and still go to heaven? Can you sin one time, steal one time and still go to heaven? Can you steal two times and still go to heaven? Can you steal three times and still go to heaven? Let me tell you something. When the scripture says thou shall not, I ain't going to mess around with that. When it says thou shall not, that's just pretty much what it says. Thou shall not. Ten commandment number uh, nine. Thou shall not bear false witness. That would be telling a lie. All liars shall have their part in a place which is referred to as the lake of fire. And then finally, Ten Commandment number 10, Thou shalt not covet anything in thy neighbor's house, his neighbor's wife, a man his manservant, or his maid servant. Uh, Brother Leon's got a nice pickup out there. I like that pickup. But I ain't going to covet it because that's your pickup. If I want to pick up like that, I'll go buy my own. Amen. But the Bible says, Thou shalt not covet even Leon's pickup truck. Amen. That's his truck. Hallelujah. Anything that would belong unto thy neighbor. Second Chronicles 7, 14, the scripture says, If... Well, there's a big word. Two letters. If my people, which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray, seek God's face, and turn from their wicked way. How many knows that's when God says, then I can hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. I believe God wants to forgive us, but we've got to turn. We can't, uh, 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 people today, they got, they, got, they, they got a concept that they can still keep stealing they ask Jesus, oh God, forgive me of all my sins, but they keep doing their sins. They're what you call repeat offenders. How many's ever heard of repeat offenders? And when you're a repeat offender, when the judge tells you, listen, I, you come in my courtroom for the last time. If I see you again, I'm going to throw the book at you. You're going to prison for a long time. You better listen to that judge or you're going to get in bad trouble because you cannot be a repeat offender. Well, let me tell you something. God's going to open the books one day and God's not looking for repeat offenders. Jesus said it best. When he healed people and delivered people and set people free, in the New Testament, Jesus said, Go and sin no more. Is that what he said? Lest what? A worse thing come upon you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I stretch the read of the Ten Commandments, God, out to the north and to the south, and God, to the east and the west of this tent. And Lord, uh, I pray, God, that the fragrance and the anointing of your word, your scripture, the verses that have been read and said tonight will just go oozing out of this tent, flow into the hearts and ears of people, the minds and the souls of every individual that hears our voice. And Lord, I pray, God, that that anointing lingers right right here on this street corner. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, I never had a drinking problem. I never had a, a drug problem. Now, I didn't like drugs. I never liked drinking. But I did have, one thing I definitely had was I had a rock and roll problem. I got to listen to worldly music and, and uh, it took me a while to get set free. But I'm so glad that Jesus, he set me free. And so I sing this little chorus, and I add things, you know, along there. Whiskey had me bound up, drugs had me bound up, but Jesus set me free. And it's just kind of get to provoke people to get to thinking. Whatever your, I'm just naming a few things that bind us up, but in the song. But if, if you begin to say, Jesus set me free, amen. You may not have uh, anything, but if you'll think, if you'll think a little while, Jesus wants to set you free. Hallelujah, amen. Glory to God. Well, I'm so glad when Jesus, he set me free when I'm so glad. Oh, Jesus, he set me free when I'm so glad. Well, I'm Jesus, he set me free when glory, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, set me free when now drugs had me found up, but Jesus, well, whiskey had me found up, but Jesus, set me free. 
Yeah. 
light shine. Hallelujah. And I'm glad, amen, to have my big Jesus banner up, amen, right over here on the outside of this tent. And uh, hey, Charles, go there and plug my light in. I didn't plug it in. Amen. Get that light on there. Amen. Just, all you gotta do is just plug it in over there. Amen. Praise the Lord. I forgot to I forgot to plug my light in, amen, out there for my Jesus banner. Amen. All but these every day people I'm gonna let my little light shine. Out. And uh, I, I appreciate Charles, he gave me that. Oh, it's gotta be plugged in over here, brother Charles. Amen. Julie's Julie got it. She's got to plug it in over here. Amen. We didn't get plugged in over there too. Amen.